Are you able to sit in another's pain without judgment, taking it away or trying to fix it? And can you rise to today's challenge to be a soother? Welcome to Love Life, featuring your host, Jane Donovan. The sun shines bright as it moves across my face. I feel the light. Once again, the universe has delivered a divine synchronicity to me, this time in the form of one word that's been coming to me for the past few weeks, soothe. It started with a love project I'm working on with my guest today, Nikki Huskis, called A House of Love. This followed with my youngest child needing some guidance, and finally, a coaching session with a client that produced not just the word soothe, but also grace in the conversation. This has resulted in a feeling that we have an important step to allow in our healing and growth of self. This episode's a great example of several universal laws, the laws of process, present moment, no judgments, and intuition. And we have a call to action to share with you that I feel you're going to love. Something that each of you who have loving intention to be of service to others will likely also embrace. My beautiful friend Nikki Huskis joins me today as someone who I consider to be a very aware parent. Nikki is a certified lifeline practitioner and kinesiologist and is more often than not fully present when parenting her children. Her wisdom, however, is applicable to all relationships, not just those with children. So I start by asking Nikki a question we had posted on the Love Life Tribe Facebook group recently. How do you choose your battles with your children? Well, it depends. If I'm coming from a place of reaction, so if I'm in a reactionary state, then I'm not choosing my. I'll, I'll choose my battles as a fighter, as a as a probably as a six year old, going into a fight with my child and win at all costs and be. <laughs> I shouldn't um, laugh, but it is that, isn't it? It's two <laughs> children. We go in and match their age if we are reactionary. Yeah. So let's just pause on that because I think that's a really important point for people to understand is that if you are having a reaction, Hmm. you really need to acknowledge that that's not parenting in that moment. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's not conscious parenting. And I guess, you know, I've been on a quest for developing my conscious parenting skills for, for a while now. And I definitely don't get it right a lot of the time. Well, sorry, I'm not always in alignment with that. But but when I am, it works every time. You know, this is about hands-on parenting with hands-off application. So I'm hands-on because I'm in. I want to be. I want to be there. I want to be. I want to be there to guide you um, to be in alignment with yourself and your truth. But um, I'm going to do it with a step back, with my hands off. I'm not going to... So it's a fine line between... Um, and it's it's awareness because if I'm not conscious, I'm wanting you to um, show up in the world in, in my ideal way, how I see my child or the extension of me showing up in the world instead of stepping back and I just want to guide you to be your unique self, however that looks, right? In a real, So that's conscious parenting. Yeah, versus unconscious parenting. And unconscious parenting will happen when I'm reactionary, when I'm not in my higher self. And does that happen when your resilience is low, when you're tired, when you've not had a healthy diet, when you've not had alone time, when you've whatever? (laughs) Well, it can. But, see, I think then, too, because we get triggered, I think we get triggered every six seconds. If I'm I'm triggered suddenly, I'm I'm not in a conscious state. So... I might be sleep deprived, but if I'm, I'm aware and I'm conscious, and even if I get triggered and I'm in the, yeah, I guess you've got depleted resources when you, when you are tired, when you, you know, you don't have your A game on, which is all your basics taken care of for yourself, (laughs) which is so often with so many parents, we find ourselves in that place. Absolutely. But I think it's also possible to be conscious with a depleted kit in your bag. So you know, it's a choice, isn't it? It's a choice. And breathe, get back into your heart. And this is where we, we might talk about soothing because soothe ourselves to soothe others will win, win every time. So if you're having a reaction, and I'm mm-hmm. so, you, you mentioned we get triggered every six seconds, is mm-hmm. that that we are 
observing something every six seconds or I, I've not heard that before I'm not familiar with what that really uh, means well I've heard Darren Wiseman talks about that so this is uh, he's the developer of the lifeline technique which is the um, which is what I'm certified in and what I often work with with people so we get triggered by our senses apparently every six seconds wow. so our smell something we see something it's a color it's a taste it's a sound and you your, your cellular memory comes up and takes you back to a place in a different time and your body starts reacting as if you were in that situation all over again as a means of protection so your subconscious mind boom goes into action takes over so you know this happens all this is happening all the time which is why mindfulness is a practice because it's impossible not to be triggered. So um, when we're dealing with little people that come from us, <laughs> we want to guide them in the best way we possibly can. We've got to really take care of ourselves first and foremost, don't we, to, to be our best selves. When we're in the moment of big reaction, mm -hmm. something has happened or not happened, often is the case, Mm -hmm. And we've been, let's use a simple example of, you know, can you please neat in your room, clean your room, tidy your room. Mm -hmm. And you've been asking for days, weeks, and you lose it. Mm -hmm. What could be happening instead? I mean, if, if we're in a peaceful parenting approach, we will step away and just be okay with a messy room. Because, I so, say, so how we do this in our family is, of course, we would like a clean house. We very rarely have a clean house, but we have six people living in our home. Um, and so we've kind of come to an agreement that your bedroom is your space and your responsibility. And in that space, I guess, you know, within reason, let's we, we all agree that it would be, it, it's okay to have that little space where if you're going to be messy, you can be messy in that space. So we negotiate as a, as a team rather than as a parent going this is my rules my way that's not going to going to work that's authoritarian which doesn't help people especially young people as they you know it's just so you find a fair balance and everyone seems okay with that but there are times when i have to go into one of my daughter's rooms and i get quite overwhelmed and think this is really disgusting. How can you leave apple cores on the bedside table? And this has been there for a week now. So I can. So the peaceful approach is pick up the apple core and take it and put it in the bin yourself. It doesn't matter. It, 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 I, I would take that approach. Is that not teaching? Is that teaching her that someone will always do it? Maybe. But probably not. It's because that really bothers me in this moment. So I'll just remove that uh, or I'll just shut the door. Because I imagine a lot of parents in that point go, well, I'm tired of going in and cleaning the room. I get to a point where I can't stand it, so I go in there and I spend two hours and I give it a thorough makeover and it's all done and it's beautiful and the child loves it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to a point where perhaps it's more along the lines of, it's not fair, why do I have to do it? And that's mm -hmm. where the mindset has dropped to match the child's age of, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's the inner child going, I don't want to be doing this either. This isn't mm -hmm. fun. I don't want to be cleaning someone's home, uh, somebody's bedroom. That's right. And, you know, look, I, I was listening to um, a, a Abraham Hicks' podcast recently on this on this topic, uh, more so t about teenagers, and and they were saying something about why are te you know, children quite often will ask, why, why are adults so grumpy? You know, and, and we are because we... <laughs> Because we have all of this responsibility or we have this perceived responsibility, right? Now, these young people come through. They've just come from source. They don't have that. They're just in the moment. And we're busy trying to make everything whatever it is that our perception of the world says it should be, which is a tidy house and clean children and respectful children who are following rules are good children. And they're not wanting to do that they're just coming here to be free spirits and love and then they're learning so as they get to teenage years they're starting to learn that I have to please you for the condition of love and so so there's all these conditions on their love and so then they get rebellious and mm. it makes so is the answer love absolutely every time is the apple core important no it's not it's irrelevant what about really, a bigger thing that we may perceive because of the rules of the world that we've grown up in? Mm -hmm. 
and I get that this is limiting belief. However, <laughs> what about, okay, I'm seeing my child make poor decisions that I know there are going to be consequences for. They mm -hmm. might be shutting doors on opportunities without realizing or, you know, we all as parents want the best for our children. Mm -hmm. And I remind myself of that every time I'm at a sporting event where I'm looking at those parents sitting next to me that are carrying on. And I think they just want the best for their child. And that's what we all want. Mm. But that's hard to sit in seeing. Mm -hmm. And actually, this applies to adults as well. Seeing mm -hmm. another person sabotaging. Mm -hmm. So how do you get out of the way of that? Because it is none of our business. Mm. How? How? So you just get out of the way of it. So if it if they're making decisions that okay, let's let's go back to when you said you know if they're not perhaps they're letting go of opportunities, right? But there are opportunities that we might see as opportunities for them, but it might not be what they choose, and that's okay. You know, we but based on our so we're going on our framework from my experience in the world. This is a great opportunity for you, but how do we know that is there is a great opportunity for them? We don't. So you step away. Uh, that's that's my that's how I operate. I don't know. That could be. You know, a lot of people think that's quite radical. But look, if we're talking about something that is obviously self destructive, and again, this is open to interpretation. And let's say your teenager is is delving in drugs, drug use. That's you know obviously a worrying thing. Well, I would be looking more at why they're choosing to do it. And most often they would be doing that to soothe. They're numbing out from something. So what are you numbing out from? If they're turning their back on opportunities, is it an opportunity that we are perceiving as something that's important for them? Or is it something that is, you, but do you, if you, you know, if you really know your child, you're really in touch with your child and you think that's so obviously what they've always wanted and now they're saying no to it, still their choice, right? But maybe, maybe it's a, a reactive part of them that's not choosing it and maybe they need some guiding towards so it's open conversations this is how it looks it looks like open conversations it's vulnerability on both sides it's parents talking about their vulnerabilities look I feel this way and I feel like I really want to get in the way and push you towards doing this because this has been my experience and I this is how I see you but say it from that place rather than you need to do this if you don't do this blah 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 that's not respectful, open, conscious parenting. That is a great example because there wasn't a huge difference in the words that you used, but they were so energetically different. I know that my own, with my, well, she's now 18, but, you know, going through having a boyfriend and wanting to go to parties where there's alcohol and all of those things, mm -hmm. really right down to the very first time that she said, can I go with my girlfriends to Westfield by myself? You know, what's the fear? And so I started the dialogue around, well, I want to say yes, but I've got fears. So here's my fears. This is what I am concerned about. If you can alleviate these fears, mm -hmm. then I can say yes. It, it, it's a similar kind of way of languaging discussion, isn't it? I love that. Yes, because you're being vulnerable by telling them how you feel and based on your experiences of the world. And then then we negotiate. And that's how, I mean, that's what we do in the world. We negotiate with people and often we don't with children. And I think I, I remember hearing one time a friend say, oh, so my, my husband was saying something to one of my children. One of my children wanted something. They were really young at that time can I have this? And, and we couldn't do that at that time. No, we, I'm sorry, we can't do that right now. And he got down on his knees and he was explaining why and going to this big story about, you know, here's, let me, let me explain it for you. Here's, here's where we're at. And it took quite a while. And I was standing with this friend of mine and she said, and she was sort of rolling her eyes going, wow, there's so much effort that's gone into that explanation. And why did he bother? Why didn't he just say no? You know, and I was thinking, well, this is this is how we do it. Be that's great. This is how we do it. Yes, it does take extra time. Won't always take that time, but why why not? I I don't want to just hear a no in life. I didn't get that job. No, you didn't. Can, can, could I have some explanation as to why? That's that's awesome when we get that opportunity. You thrive from knowing these things and learning these things about how other people see you in the world. So. So they're important conversations to have. Yeah. You know, there's also, I've also heard you say, say yes. Say yes as much as you can to children. Mm. 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 And I remember trying that and I think I got through about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Find 
another way to say no then. Maybe, you know, look, hey, we can let's... So, you know, okay, we've got a similar situation at the moment with our 11-year-old really wanting to have this particular app on her device and we're really hesitant and I know that the age limit is that she's able with set at the moment that she's able to participate and so we've said look we've had lots of conversations and we lately we've we've been ending it with it's it's not a no forever it's a no for now because we really have some concerns about what we don't know about this app so we're going to promise you that we're going to find out more about it so we can so so she's okay with that no You've just reminded me, I actually did do that when my children were around the same age. I do remember saying, it's not a no forever, it's just a no for now. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm going to do to get comfortable with my fears. Teens love this too, but it's people love this. You know, if you say this, um, I really want to say yes to this because I can see how badly you want it. I, I, I want nothing more than to say yes to you for this. I'm going to try and make that happen. I'm going to try and be able to make myself say yes to this. I want to, do you know, it's, yes. it's that kind of dialogue I feel is healthy and kind, mm. you know. Really what about the child that is overwhelmed, upset, mm -hmm. and we go in to fix? Mm -hmm. What do you do instead? Shall we talk about the word soothe? Absolutely. So the child that's overwhelmed and, okay, I often... What I hear come out of my mouth a lot of the time is, um, you know, there's nothing to fix. I, I can't fix you. There's nothing to fix. You're not broken. When there's overwhelm or, or despair. Highs and strong emotions. Well, sometimes space is a really good thing. And, and we'll say, you know, hey, look, you really need your space and I respect that. So we'll just we'll just give you space for now. Or what do you need? Does it, what, what can I do for you? Is there anything that I need that I can do for you to help you out in this situation? So ultimately, yeah, what it is is soothing. So we talk about even just sitting with someone in their staff, just sitting with them. I, I really wish I could help you with this. I don't understand it. I can see that it's really – so you observe what, you, what you're seeing before you. I can see that you're really upset. I can see you're really angry. I can see, oh, so much anger, so much sadness, and I wish there was something I can do for you. And then just by doing that, sometimes they'll – often I'll, my children will say, you know, no, there isn't anything you can do, and then that's enough because they're acknowledging that you can't fix this, and I'm saying – I know I can't fix this, I already know I can't, but I'm going to sit here with you in this moment, you know, and then it opens up conversation, possibly at the time or down the track for, you know what, there is something or, you know, then you, then you start saying things like, would it help if that's a parental thing, we can't help that, that's great and, and that's great, you know, but it's, it's not assuming that you know the answers to fix whatever it is that the situation is that they are in, we're not in it. You know, they're born into this time-space reality with their own challenges that we couldn't possibly know. And so much of it is similar to our experiences and so much of it isn't. We don't know. So we just, I just think the lines of communication open at all times with a space of love and, and just, and, and a space. So when we talk about unconditional love, you know, unconditional love, um, unconditional parenting, all these sort of things that are thrown around. So we're nearly, are nearly always conditional. Of course they, they are. are conditional, absolutely. It's time for Heart Talk. Nikki and I, over the past few weeks, have had some great discussions around the word soothing. I feel the ability to soothe another is a very underrated quality or ability, and I want to put the spotlight on the word soothing now. To soothe another, in my mind, is the ability to be able to sit in another person's stuff in their pain, in their moment of despair, without the need to fix it. They are not broken, they do not need fixing, they simply need the space to be able to feel what they are feeling. As a culture, I feel we are too quick to help another to move through their pain or their what we might call negative emotions. It's in this pain, in these emotions, that help us to receive the greatest gifts in life, we see someone cry and we wipe away their tears. We see someone frustrated and we want to provide the answer for them. So often we do this too soon, either before they're ready or before the lessons and gifts have been felt. We have to race to a finish line, whatever that perceived finish line is, and we are missing out on so much as a result. 
I think it's time to get off the rat race of a finish line and start to embrace all that we are feeling and experiencing. Pain is our signpost for change, not something to get rid of. It's in this pain that we become motivated for change. And if we shortchange the pain without deep acknowledgement of what we're feeling and why, then we lose the opportunity for great change. And so our gorgeous Love Life community that's filled with high emotionally intelligent people that are compassionate people, the healers, the teachers, the nurturers and the leaders, I invite you to join Nikki and I in a quest to recognize the importance of allowing others to feel what they need to feel without the rush to fix it. Now you're all naturally talented people. You have this ability to sit in another's pain without judgment, without fixing them by simply being. Your energy is healing in your presence without the need for anything more. I don't know, a friend to sit next to and hold your hand, a lover who whispers, I'm here with you, or a nurturer who holds the space for what's to be. And please don't play down your ability to do this. For many, many people are unable to hold the space of soothing. So your gift that you can do this effortlessly and easily, maybe it's not felt by you as something special. Yet please believe me when I say this is a very, very special gift. And even more importantly, this gift is very much needed now in the world. And as we all grow in life experience and we gain greater wisdom, of course, the temptation is to share what we know with others. You know, we've got the answer or we've tried something and it's worked really well and come on, try this, it'll work for you too. And I get that and that's beautiful motivation and gosh, I've got a whole coaching practice around this. So I totally get it. But many people are not ready to hear what we've got to say. And only this past week, there's been discussion on the Love Life Tribe Facebook group around this very topic, how to have conversations with those that are not either ready to hear you or they're not in alignment with your beliefs. Now, this ability to sit in soothing energy, I think just may be the answer for some of these situations, allowing others to have the life experience they're meant to have without judgment, without a desire to have everyone be the same, but with a loving intent to connect. It's this disconnection in society that's causing us all our greatest pain. It's the perceived gap of difference. Who's right, who's wrong, what way to do things, this way, that way, whatever. When really, none of this results in connection. It's when we can reach for a higher spiritual vibration of connection and acceptance of another, that we can find the reasons to disconnect, start to ease. I believe holding the space or soothing another can be a great entry point for connection rather than disconnection. And likely, as the others start to feel what they're experiencing in a state of allowing, they just may turn to you and say, can you help me? And from there is your invitation to share the wisdom if you desire. Now I want to share with you Nikki's gorgeous words of wisdom around this topic. So I start by asking her, what is soothing? I am going to come back to the analogy of a child because it's the best one that I can come up with right now in this scenario. You know when a, when a child falls over and hits their, hurts their knee, skins their knee or whatever. This is something that happens all the time and, and out in the world often we go, oh, look at that. Oh, you'll be right. Okay, put a Band-Aid on or, you know, little cuddle off you go get up again move on that's what we do we're so quick to just just put that on there and off you go get back into the world push them out there and i take those little moments i i don't know where i heard this and what made me do this but i do it with in any situation that i see a person in pain well and that is that in their moment when they're screaming some children will scream so loud at this and and you'll know sometimes those parents that will say oh gosh, you know, this is my dying swan child or what have you, you know, they're really quite melodramatic, but I will sit with them in that moment and, oh, and just be with them. And what I think it is, is an energetic match. It's, it's the last thing in the world I think a person in distress needs is someone to come along and go, oh, with the, the complete opposite energy, you're in distress, let's make it funny. Oh, I hope the ground's okay. Or, oh, did you, you know you hit the door, I hope the door's not 
broken or whatever, you know, this kind of trying to make light of it, make it funny or um, even just be really, really happy and, oh, distract and look over there, there's a bouncy castle or something to, to take them away, to take their pain away from them in that moment. And I think that is, and I know I may be looking into this way too deeply, but I really feel this is important because that did hurt. Even if it, in, in, in that little person's world, that really hurt right now enough for me to stop and scream and I'm having an emotional reaction, sit with them in that. Um, so when I say matching it, I'm not going to match it by sitting there and crying, but I'm certainly going to be around that level of just, oh, so soothing. Okay, so I'm going to sit with you. You may or may not respond to a little bit of a cuddle or you may or may not respond to me just sitting here with soothing words or just silence, just sitting with them, someone to sit with them. And and we do things like we've done things like uh, say the knee is bleeding. Okay, so wow, look at that. So we look at it rather than let's pretend that's not there. Let's take the attention away from, oh, there's blood. Now they're going to cry more. Wow, look at your blood. Look at your body doing what it needs to do. Look at that. And so I'm, I'm gently in the moment observing what is real, what is happening. Are you okay? I'm just going to sit with you. And nine times out of ten, that person will get up and move through that experience in a, in a much quicker way but also gently and fully. So they're fully processing their emotions in that moment and if we skip over the emotions that they're feeling in that moment, that's going to go somewhere, it's going to go inside, you're going to hold it in and that's going to come up for processing at some point. That's not an ideal time. So I think there's no time like that very moment where there's the um, trauma no matter how trivial it might seem to some people, be in that moment with them. So it's holding a space, isn't it? It's just holding a space with love, heart wide open, breathing, just here, not trying to take it away from them. Be in it with them fully in every, in every aspect as they process it. Then they will move on. And now you may sit with someone who's in high-level trauma, they're not going to get over that situation in that one moment, a death of a, of a loved one or, you know, some, something really traumatic. But in that moment that you're with them, you just sit. So you match. You don't. I think that's it. It's honouring that moment rather than trying to make light of it. I mean, of course we know there's, there's a gift in every negative experience. There's something to learn and grow from, from with every experience that is perceived to be negative or traumatic or what have you. But in that moment, that might not be, that might not be what we're doing here. We're just sitting with you in it. It's someone to sit with you in your shit, right? And that's it with love. Not try to move it, not try to take it away. It's beautifully honouring the emotion that is being experienced. And we so yep. often want people to go from sadness to joy, from depression to calm and it's just you know the jumps up the emotional ladder are unrealistic expectations right. and they're yeah. not enabling the person to deeply process and feel exactly mm -hmm. what it is they're feeling half the yeah. time people don't even get a chance to label what they're emotionally feeling before mm -hmm. somebody is trying to get them out of it yeah and i love this idea of i believe this is actually what holding space is and that was another question I recently had emailed to me was, you know, what's, what does holding space mean? I don't really quite understand the term. Mm. I believe holding space is sitting in a neutral place. Yeah. There is no, I have no emotional charge. Yes. Neither good nor bad. No judgment. And, you know, and, and that's not easy for a highly sensitive person. Or sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's very hard because we are <laughs> empaths. So we, we go straight into the other person's energy. Yes. And that can be really challenging. But at the same time, it's none of my business. It is yep. neutral on every level. Yeah. And it's just sitting in the now moment, mm -hmm. accepting it for what it is, mm -hmm. with faith that all is well. Yeah. And hold that space for the other person to feel and be and do whatever it is they have to feel and be and do in that moment. Absolutely. And that that is all okay. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to our mm. fun little project that we are starting. Shall we share? Let's do it. Well, by sharing it, I guess we're igniting it, aren't we? We we're are. 
lighting a little yeah idea. we're putting it further out in the universe than we have done so far so nikki and i have had a vision for many years which actually originally stepped stepped from i think from social aid yes and it was <laughs> acknowledging people in their moment of pain how wouldn't it be lovely if there was a house that was just filled with love mm. where people could just go to feel loved to be soothed yeah Yep, that's it. Who would, who would not want to go there? Of course we want to go there. So we are yeah. setting up a house of love. Yeah. And it's got many facets to it. And we invite our beautiful listeners and Love Life Tribe to join mm. us in the house of love. You're all in the house of love, all of you. And it's having a commitment to being able to hold the space of soothing for another. It's really sharing a space. It's really sharing a space because as you sit with someone too, don't you just then, I mean, it doesn't matter who I sit with in a space, but I know when they're having their stuff, I can relate to their stuff every single time. It may not be the same story. Of course not. But I can, I can relate to the emotion every time. And so we share. We share a space. Yeah. Beautiful. And so we're setting up a little chat room where people Ooh. can just hang out in and either be a soother or be soothed. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that uh, there will be times that each of us will be a soother and there will be times that the same people will be needing soothed. Yes. And so it is a place of everything that we've talked about today. Love it. I love it. And I we think haven't it's... even got the website up, but we have got the domain registered, so we will yep. get all of that happening. But this is just putting it first steps out as an invitation to our gorgeous listeners if you wish to join us informally or formally it, it does not matter it is literally in setting an intent of wanting to be one who has the ability the desire and the heart-centered space to mm. be able to provide soothing for another when in need that's it and how perfect and how vital and how needed this type of thing is mm. I think if we look at every area in society, whether we look at, you know, stressed out people or anxious people or depressed people or um, uh, people that are arguing or narcissists or sociopaths or whatever or drug ad ad um, people with drug addictions or, or any addiction, all of it is from a lack of love, of soothing. Mm. Yep. And I really imagine that this space is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger where mm. this is the first point of connection instead of disconnection. This is the first point of feeling love and being love that's mm. been missing. Yep. I think it's a huge missing link. It's yep. always been there, but it's been skimmed over and not been given its own honoured space. Mm. Mm. It's like in a 10-step program or something. That needs to be step yeah. one to five, you know, <laughs> and it's only been point one of a step. Absolutely. it's. I, I don't need to know the story, but you're feeling something that's less than nurturing, so I'm here to sit with you and, and you know, and bringing in some gentle tools, offering some things that, you know, so you might have someone that says, look, I can, I can say, I can do some Reiki or I can, I can, uh, or here, have you tried this? I don't know. It's, it's that, it's, it's real life, heart open sharing of a space to just give love. All That's the time. right. And I feel that when we want to offer tools, because, you know, we've all got so many tools and we all, all of mm. our tribe have so much wisdom to mm. share and the desire to share. But mm. I always feel it's important to say, you know, do you want some suggestions? Do yeah. you want me to offer some, some ways yeah. that perhaps you could help? Beautiful. Because they might say, no, I'm not ready, or no, never, or yes, or maybe. Yeah. We've got to really watch that we don't project and move from that space yeah. of, of soothing yeah. into the place of fixing too mm. quickly. Mm -hmm. And I guess the exception would be, you know, the little reminder